This is part three of our scripting tutorial, and we're gonna um, we're gonna start off by modifying some of what we've set up already. And we I made the areas a little bit too big, and uh, we're gonna change our character quite a bit here. So let's start in the edit menu, and we're gonna add a resize area. And uh, this is just gonna save us some time later. Let's make it um, four by two, four tall, two wide, and click OK. And some objects were deleted as a result of this operation. So if you get this message, um, it, just click OK. And then, at least on mine, it's telling me my, um, my start location is in the wrong spot, and that's easy to fix. Just click up there, and we'll paint it right down there. OK, and so if I look here in my forest, I have no longer have any creatures. And that's fine. That character we set up, you know, that, what was he, a criminal? No, a convict. And uh, in his underpants, we don't need him anyway, so we'll get rid of him. Let's paint a new character down there. Uh, NPC, human, and we're just going to do a commoner, male, or female, I don't care which one you pick. And uh, we'll turn that guy around. And here's where we're going to set this up. This, this is going to be uh, a guard. And he's going to recognize us when we approach. And he's just going to say, you know, hello or something nice like that. But he's not going to say it here when we start the area. He's going to wait until we get close. And when we get close enough, he'll say hello. And then after that, we're going to do a second stage where um, we'll set up a sort of a, a situation where if the player has a certain ring, the guard will greet you and wave to you and if you don't have the ring he'll treat you like an enemy and attack you so that's what we'll set up next um, two phases okay so we'll start out let's right click on our character here go to properties and let's give him a name instead of common or male uh, we'll call him guard and for the tag Again, in all caps, we'll do CT for character tag underscore guard. Um, let's go to the scripts tab. And we're going to do the usual. We're going to delete everything. Just tab your way through and delete every script. And we're essentially turning this guy into a dummy. He just... Uh, stands there with no brains. This is the brains, we just removed all his brains. Um, okay, we've looked at Heartbeat, we've looked at On Spawn. We're gonna look at a new one this time, and this is called On Perception. On Perception is a script that gets fired when the NPC notices something. And there's four ways this can get uh, fired. It can get uh, fired or triggered when the NPC sees you, or sees another character, when the NPC hears you or hears another character, when the NPC stops seeing you, and when the NPC stops hearing you. And so um, that's what will trigger these uh, this script. Let's click the edit button next to on perception. Okay, a uh, simple script to start out with. What we will do is we're going to create, uh, you know how we can create an integer, we can say int my number equals 6, okay, that's how you can store the number 6 inside of a variable, and that type of variable is an int, which holds numbers, okay, well just like you do that, you can also create a variable that holds objects, object, um, okay, and uh, you can set that equal to any object in the game that you can get a hold of. Now here's how this works. There's a number of functions over here in the filter list, you can look for them, that get objects for you. And you can get the player, you can get um, an object by tag, so anything in the game that has a tag, you can get that object. And you can't really use it in the code until you get it and store it in your own variable. And so the type of variable is object, and the name is whatever you decide to name it. Um, we like to put a lowercase o there to remind ourselves that it's an object, but it doesn't have to be named that. 
And just like this could be an integer my number, you can have object my object or whatever. And so in this case, um, we want to give it a name that matches what it is and what it's going to do. So here's what we'll be doing in this script. We're going to look for whichever object was just perceived by the NPC. So this guard that's sitting here in the forest, he's going to perceive something. And maybe it's the player character that just walked into range, but maybe not. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's an enemy goblin that wandered into range, or maybe it's a rabbit that's hopping through. So we're going to get it, and, uh, and then we can do something with it. <clears throat> so we're going to say object O seen, meaning this was the object that was just seen. And there's a handy function that only really makes sense in this script. Remember, this script gets fired anytime something is perceived. And uh, the name of this function is get last perceived. We click on this. And this is a very simple function. Okay, let's talk return types again. The return type will be some object. Okay, if it's the player character, that'll be the object that's returned. If it's a bunny rabbit, that'll be the object that's returned. The name is get last perceived, and notice there are no parameters, no arguments. But we still have to put an empty set of parentheses. So we type it in just like that. Get last perceived. Empty parentheses, followed by a semicolon. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now that object, if it's the player character, will come flying out of this function, will go right through the equal sign, and get caught in this variable we set up called OScene. So we'll catch it, we'll save it right there, and then we can use it later in our script. Okay, next thing we're going to do is test to see what it is. If get is PC O scene. Okay, this might look a little strange, but a um, couple things going on here. We have a function that's right here. It's called get is PC, and it takes one parameter that has to be an object. And all it does is it checks to see whether this object is the player character, or if it's a bunny rabbit or a goblin or a treasure chest or whatever. And so if it is the player, it returns true. If it is not the player, it returns false. And that's how if statements work. So here, with this parenthesis and this final parenthesis, is our if statement. And it just needs to know if there's a true or false condition in here. And if it's true, we'll do whatever's in the curly braces. If it's false, it'll skip this and do something else. So, um, get is PC. Just to, you know, take a look at it, let's type it in here. Get is PC. And there it is. And you can read the description here. Returns true if O creature, or O scene in our example, is a player controlled character. Okay? Now, you might notice this here. The return type is int. And you might wonder, how can an int be true or false? Well, there's a special type of int called a Boolean value and it's either true or false. It's just a one or a zero to the computer. So it's technically a number, but um, in this scripting language, they call that an int. So it's okay. It'll be true or false, okay? So in other words, the way this works is, if the object that was just seen happens to be the player, then we can do something. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna tell the guard to greet the player. Action, speak, string. Greetings, friend. Okay, and we'll just leave that as it is. We don't need to have an else statement yet. Um, if it's the player, the guard will say, greetings, friend. If it's not the player, the guard will do nothing. So if the bunny rabbit hops in, nothing will happen. If a goblin wanders in, nothing will happen. Let's go ahead and save this. We're going to call this sm underscore guard underscore OP for on perceived and we will click save close that close this and um, we'll save our module and test it
Okay, so we're beginning uh, way back here in this area, and there's the guard way up there. So as I click and, and walk towards him, uh, watch for the text to show up over his head or down here in the console window. Greetings, friend. Okay, so the um, unperceived script, script fired when we got close enough to the guard, and then the guard checked to see if this was the player-controlled character, and it was, so the guard said, greetings, friend. Okay, notice um, the guard actually said it twice. We didn't see it show up twice here because it's the same thing, so it looked the same, but he actually said it twice. You know, we'll address that a little bit later, but until we get to it, try to imagine why this might be happening twice, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll uh, put a fix in for that a little bit later. Okay, let's go back into the script. Okay, for the next stage here, we're going to make this conversation a little more complicated. And we're going to give the player um, the opportunity to pick up a ring. And then, when the player approaches the guard, the guard is going to either see that ring and call the player a friend, or not see the ring if the, if the player doesn't pick it up or doesn't have it equipped. And, uh, and then the guard will assume that the player is an enemy and will attack. So this is where you, you get a lot of control over how things play out in your stories. So with, if you understand scripting and you're able to write the scripts the right way, you can have your game react to different situations that you set up. So you give the player the choice, find a ring and keep it. Uh, and if so, the player discovers, hey, I can walk up to these guards and they treat me like a friend because I've got this ring. Or they don't pick up the ring, they approach the guards and they get attacked. So. Um, here's where things start to get pretty fun. First we're going to create the ring. So let's go to our placeable items. Or I'm sorry, we're going to paint um, items and miscellaneous jewelry rings and we'll get a copper ring. And we're just going to place it on the ground near the starting um, spot for the player. Now if you zoom in on this what you'll see is it looks like a little bag on the ground. It's kind of hard to see. But it's just, it's a little bag. And that's because uh, the smaller items like rings are just tricky. So they don't try to draw a ring on the ground. They just put a bag there. Okay. Um, bigger items like swords will look like swords, but small things look like bags. Okay. Uh, let's right click on that bag and choose properties. And what we're going to do is change the name and the tag. So the name will be um, pass ring, and the tag we will put uh, it for item tag underscore pass ring, just like that. Um, if you would like, you can go and change the appearance, although. You're not going to see it in the game. You just see it in the inventory. Um, we're not going to give it any special abilities or anything. You could write a description here. Um, uh, the difference between unidentified and identified description, there's some items have levels, and so if the, if the item is of a higher level, a low-level character will look at it, and they won't know what it is. And so for the unidentified description, you could say, this is a strange-looking ring. And then once they identify it, either by using a spell or taking it to a merchant or becoming, you know, leveled up high enough that they can understand what it is. Then you can give more details in the identified description and uh, has no bearing on what we're doing right now. I probably shouldn't even bother with that. So let's just move on. Uh, if you want to, you can give it a special description, but um, not necessary. Okay. Um, so I think that's it. So we'll click OK. So that's the ring. And now we need to set up some changes to our script. So you can either right click on your guard and go to properties, or we can just double click the script over here, the on perceived script. Okay. Um, we're gonna keep this part here. Uh, we'll make a few changes to it. We're gonna keep that structure in place. We need to have another object, 
however. And this object, um, we need to know if the player has the ring. And so we need a, a variable that can hold on to um, whatever the player has. And so then we can test and see if uh, whatever the player has has any tag that matches the item we're looking for. So let's create an object, a variable that can hold an object, and we'll call it O ring. Okay, and just like this um, O scene where we got uh, the last perceived character, and then we check to see if it's the player, we're going to get um, use a get function to find if the player has this ring. So in the filter, we'll take a look at get item. There's lots of get item functions. It's worth your while to just kind of spend some time looking through these functions because as you learn what these things can do, you start to get ideas um, for how you could use them in your story. But we're going to get item possessed by. And let's take a look at how that works. And it says, get the object possessed by O creature with the tag S item tag. Uh, and it says, return value on error, object invalid. Okay, so what that means is we can check any player, uh, any object, any creature in the game and see if they have a certain item with a certain tag. If they do, we'll get that object returned. If they don't, we'll get something called object invalid, okay, which is a special keyword that we can check. Um, and we may need to look at that later. So the return type is an object. Hopefully that's going to be the ring. Uh, get item possessed by is the name of the function. We have two parameters, object o creature and string s item tag. So this is the object that you want to check. It's kind of like we're cops and we're going to frisk this guy and look for the, the ring that he has. And then the second one is a string, so it's a word that we type in in quotes and this tells us it should be the item tag. So we're going to look for the tag. All right, we'll use it right here. Get item possessed by. And um, the, the object that owns this ring, or the object that we're going to look for, we're going to frisk, is O scene, right? And that should be the player. Okay, the second thing is we need to type in the tag of what we're looking for. And the tag is it underscore pass ring. Okay, so if everything works as planned, o scene will be the player character and o ring will be the pass ring. Okay, if this doesn't, if the player doesn't have the pass ring, then o ring will contain something called object invalid. Okay, all right. Um, We'll start off with this if statement. If get is PC O scene, then I'm just going to move this down because we need to make some decisions here. If it is the player character, we need to do another test. Okay, if it's the player, now we need to see if they have the ring. Okay, so we're doing an if inside of another if. If O, oops, I'm in all caps still. I keep doing that. If O ring is equal to object invalid, okay? If the ring contains object invalid, what does that mean for us? Well, it means the player or whoever is in O scene doesn't have the pass ring, okay? So if that's the case, we need to have the guard become hostile and attack. So here's how we'll do that. We're going to say action speak string die trespasser. And then we need to tell the guard to actually do the attacking. So we'll say action attack O scene. Now if you're wondering how I know what to do with these, it's the usual. I'm just looking them up. You can look them up in the filter. Um, action. There's all kinds of actions you can apply to any object in the game. Action attack. And it's very simple. Um, attack O attacky. 
Okay, that's the object that you want to attack. So uh, no return type, it's void. It needs two arguments, object o attacky, so whoever you want this player to attack or this NPC to attack. And then int uh, a Boolean passive. It's a true or false value. Okay, so let's read about that. It says if this is true, it's going to attack in passive mode. And I actually, I don't even know what that means. It might mean that um, they'll kind of defend themselves, but they won't pursue you if you run away or something like that. I don't know. If you have time, you can test it out. Uh, I never have. But um, this is one of those functions where you can actually leave this one off and just put in the one parameter. And um, so I think it assumes it'll be false if you don't put it in there. And that's what we've done here. We're just saying, hey, guard, action attack the O scene object. Okay. Now, this is a case where we want to have an else statement because if this is true, it means that the player doesn't have the ring. But if it's false, it means the player does have the ring. Or it has something that, uh, yeah, it does, it does have the ring is what it means. So else um, we want to have the guard wave to you and say greetings friend. So uh, here's how you make the NPC wave to you. Action play animation and I'm going to show you this one here in the filter also because uh, it involves using constants. Action play animation. Okay, here's how this looks. Um, cause the action subject to play an animation. And then the, uh, let's look at the parameter list. We have one, two, three parameters. Okay, the first one is an int, so it's a number, and it's called n animation. Um, and then up here in the description it says n animation is animation with all caps, an underscore, and a star. What in the world does that mean? Well, these are constants. If you go up here to your where your functions list is, next to that you can see one called constants. And so if I delete this, there's a lot of constants here. And I can type in animation underscore. And the star here represents fill in the blank. So animation underscore something. And here's all the animations you can do. Um, some of them don't apply to players but or characters, but here's some animation fire forget bow. Um, animation fire forget salute. Um, taunt. Okay, so you can have an NPC do all these animations. And so that's just what it's telling you. In this spot, you need to put in one of those animations. And you type it in just like that animation, you know, underscore fire forget underscore dodge. Um, it's an int because behind the scenes, this is these are all numbers. Uh, constants means it's a number that's kind of hardwired into this name, but we don't need to know that. We just have to type in whatever animation we want. So, in the first slot there, I will type in animation underscore fire forget underscore. greeting and then a semicolon now the other two parameters we can leave off but there's one for speed so you can give it you know one would be the normal speed you can make it faster or slower than normal the second one is duration and so you can make it last a certain number of seconds so if you want them to wave for 25 seconds you can do that but we'll just leave that off um, and just put the name of the animation there We also want the guard to say a greeting, so we'll do another action. Actually, we have it down here, sorry. We can take this, greetings friend, and let's just drag this up right there. We can delete that other one. Okay, so that's that. Um, at this point, we're done. We got some extra white space here, so we can uh, clean that up if you need to. Okay. All right, let's review this script real quick. We create two variables here that can hold objects. O scene will hold whatever the guard perceives, so hopefully that's the player. And O ring will hold the pass ring if the player has it. 
or if OSCENE has it. If not, it'll hold object invalid. So first we find out if OSCENE is the player. If so, we move into this next decision. And the next decision is if the ring is invalid, that means the player doesn't have the ring. So we say die trespasser and we have the guard attack. Otherwise, the player does have the ring. So we have the guard wave and we have the guard say greetings friend. Let's save that. No errors. And we'll test that out. Save the module, build test module. Okay, now the way you test this properly is you start by picking up the pass ring. Okay, we can check the inventory and you can see there it is. You don't actually have to put it on, it doesn't matter, it just has to be in your inventory. And if we approach, we should see greetings friend and a wave. There it is. So now, what's interesting about the on perceived script is I can walk back out of range and the guard will stop perceiving me and then I can drop this and now I no longer have the ring. So let's approach the guard again and see what happens. Oh, here he comes and he's fighting me and whoops sorry about that okay um, so that worked correctly alright in our next tutorial we're gonna clean up some of those uh, some of those multiple um, perceptions for seeing and hearing and we're also going to talk about user-defined events which is uh, really useful where you can fire off multiple um, events and keep track of multiple things at the same time and then you know really all the options are open for you as a as a script writer that'll be in scripting tutorial 4